Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, I go over who should buy the RTX 3090, the 3080 is having stability issues, we may have just learned why, and the RTX 3060 gets confirmed, along with performance. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Nvidia's RTX 3090 was officially released. Okay, for maybe two seconds, because I swear I looked maybe a minute later on Newegg and they were gone. And speaking of, I'm working on potentially setting up an in-stock tracker for everyone, so as soon as say a 3080 is in stock, it'll notify you. I think I'm going to do that on the Discord channel, so make sure to subscribe and sign up there for updates on that. Anyway, while the cards were non-existent, the reviews did drop. And yeah, they're basically what we saw in the leaked review that dropped a few days before. The RTX 3090 gets around 10 to 15% more performance over the 3080 and 4K. Some benchmarks get up to 20% faster, but let's face it, the real performance difference is in 8K gaming due to all that VRAM, as well as professional applications. Basically, I see this being for only three types of people. First is gamers who simply must have the fastest GPU on the market, period, and they're willing to spend whatever it takes to get it. Of course, there's a chance AMD's big Navi is faster, but we shall see. The second group are the two gamers who own an 8K TV. And finally are professionals who get the value in spending significantly more for an okay jump in performance. And that's it. Next up for today, some new RTX 3080 users have been reporting a pretty serious issue with their new GPU. That is, they seem to be crashing to the desktop when getting clocks above 2 GHz. Now, we aren't 100% sure why, but Igor's lab does have a decent guess. And unfortunately, if he's right, it actually could be a hardware issue. Starting things off, he blames the problem on Nvidia's secrecy with board partners. According to him, board partners literally had to produce their first batch of cards before they even had working drivers. That means they were limited to only testing thermal stability and power on, so they obviously couldn't go through all the testing needed before actually making cards. As far as what the problem really is, Igor's lab thinks that it may, an emphasis on may because I've actually found somewhat of a counter to it, but I'll get to that in a second. Either way, it may be a wrong component selection. Specifically, the type of capacitors used by some companies. Basically, some use more expensive MLCCs, which are better at filtering high-frequency components. Some use POS caps, which are cheaper but simply not as good. And some use both. According to him, ASUS just uses MLCCs, while Zotac uses POS caps. That would obviously mean Zotac would have way more issues with this and ASUS would likely have none. But that's kind of the issue. I actually found at least one Asus 3080 that seems to be having the same issue, but that's also only one that I could find. But luckily, if it is what Igor claims, he also states that Zotac is fixing the issue. Not only that, but I'm sure any other company that has that issue will likely be fixing it. Also, I will say that I got in touch with my Zotac rep who will hopefully get back to me with their take soon. As for fixing the issue, manually downclocking it just a bit seems to do the trick, as it stops any boosting past that 2 GHz threshold. And obviously that isn't a huge issue for most, but those who really like overclocking, as well as users who don't like to go in and manually do anything, definitely won't like this. Lastly for today, a really interesting new roadmap was originally posted on the Baidu forums, but was unfortunately taken down. Fortunately, it wasn't before HXL found and shared it on Twitter. As you can see, it's a roadmap from the NVIDIA AIB partner, Galax. Now, before I get to it, you could argue that this is fake, but it's one of those times where it almost certainly isn't. This is clearly a presentation, and basically no faker would go through all of this trouble. Either way, we can see that it confirms a couple things. For one, that the 20GB RTX 3080 is real. Of course, we've been seeing this one for a while now, and obviously Nvidia could scrap it at the last minute, but it's at least a thing. Next up is confirmation of the RTX 3060, and while that obviously isn't a surprise to anyone, you can see that the graph shows performance in relation to last gen GPUs. And when it comes to the RTX 3060, it actually shows that it's on par with the RTX 2080. Obviously, that may not come as a surprise to anyone given the RTX 3080's performance, but moving up two slots in a single generation, given it stays the same price, is impressive. 
Unfortunately, you likely won't be able to get one for weeks or even months after release. But still, I'll have links to the 3080 and when it's released, 3060, down in the description below. So while that does it for today, are you hoping to pick up an RTX 3080 or are you waiting for that RTX 3060? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.